All right, man, here we go. Big bumper job for today. Grill, bumper. Uh, we're gonna seal this and shoot it. We're gonna use our uh, sealer primer, non-sanding primer. Hammer the primer on, then we'll go right to the color. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, to the other guy, to the guy, is that what it is, the guy, the guy, hey man, I'm glad you're making videos again, dude, uh, sorry for the misunderstanding, uh, welcome to the, the group, man, I've uh, been watching your uh, videos, uh, I'm glad that uh, you decided to make videos again, it was never my intention to uh, make you take your page down, uh, you know, I was just, standing up for my friend that's all so uh, I hope there's no hard feelings and, uh, enjoy watching your videos don't be scared to talk in the camera man you know tell us what you're doing what kind of clear you're using uh, I was watching some of your videos this morning is that a one coat clear that you're using or is that just one coat of clear so, that's all I wanted to say I've been watching your videos uh, thanks for subscribing to my page uh, Thanks for making the videos, man. Uh, you know, we need more guys out there making videos and uh, showing people how to do this stuff. So. Uh, Big Eric, tried to call you this morning, man. I hope everything goes good with your surgery. Uh, I wanted to talk to you before you went to Colorado. Uh, I'll try to call you again. I got your answer machine. I left you a little message. Uh, I'll be uh, saying a prayer for you and your family. I hope everything goes good. cold in Florida today well I, don't know, I guess it's in the 60s you know it's cold for here but, uh, that's probably pretty good right there no need to stack that stuff up it covers really good one coat gives us a good uniform ground coat to go over and uh, we'll go right to color how do you like that crack in the grill just leave that paint it alrighty then so that's what we're dealing with. There you go. Oh, load that flash a minute. Sit down and bullshit. Uh, alrighty then. Yeah, watched one of uh, Matt's videos yesterday. Somehow I missed it. It's a month old, October. Even I have my name in the title and I missed the video somehow. So, 
don't know. It's like uh, all my subscribers aren't coming up on the video page there. I gotta go hunt through the videos sometimes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it's all HBR. It's all your videos this morning. Having fun with that hood, huh? I don't know, man. Should have bought a hood for that thing, maybe, huh? Took that out of the pop fun. I like to do that sometimes when I get a cheapy car like that, I'll buy a fender. I think some of the aftermarket companies you can get fenders for like 25, 30 bucks. So, um, it's really a mess, in a sense, messing with it. And uh, I think a hood for that car is like $100. Maybe a little under. But uh, it's all Greg Porter this morning making his uh, convertible top pieces. That's cool. So, we got that top down at Scooters. They'll probably rot down there, Greg sitting on that car. Uh, that's how everything's done in the past, you know. Everything's good when it sits out there and uh, don't want to get rid of it. And before you know it, it's no good for anybody. So uh, you guys that are holding on to parts out there, man, recycle your stuff, you know, give it some life. Let it bring life to something that's, uh, you know, in the process. Sometimes when we save that stuff and, uh, you know, make it unattainable. It's no good for anybody by the time it comes around to using it, so. So yeah, that's about it. We got the Escort painted yesterday. We'll get rid of that today. Andrea's delivering that, so that's good. And uh, the guy, uh, the guy, or the other guy. How about just the Honda guy, man? That was better. <laughs> he was asking me about the scuff for the blend panels. Uh, back in the 90s when I used to spray Sickens a lot, it used to be right in the manual there. They actually uh, awarded the Ajax. Uh, it was their uh, scuff, scuff, uh, scuff for a choice with a gray scotch right pad. They, they like to use the Ajax. And it used to be right in the uh, uh, instruction manual. I don't know if it's like that anymore. I'm sure they have like a sand fix or a sanding compound you know, that you can use to scuff the panel. One thing I will tell you, I've noticed uh, when I worked at Toyota, we used to use, uh, what was it called? It was Scuff in a Bucket, Scuff Bucket. Uh, I forget the company that made it, but it was uh, it was scuff stuff. You know, you put it on your scotch spray pad and you scuff the panel with it. And uh, I found that it had a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of chemicals and stuff in it. It made my hands break out where the uh, Ajax and the Comet doesn't do that. So that's another benefit of using the Ajax. So uh, your hands are nice and clean and uh, you don't get that uh, sanding compound up under your fingernails and stuff. It seemed to kill the skin on the cuticles. So that's another reason I like it. And it's dirt cheap, you know? So give it a try, man. It works good. And uh, if you figure out what you pay for a bucket of that scuffy stuff and you buy a couple of those a month, you know, over a 12 month period, you can save a couple hundred, three, four hundred bucks a year if you just switch from the uh, scuff stuff to the uh, Comet or Ajax. And it'll do just as good a job. Uh, gets all the impurities off the panel, all the oil and stuff. So it's a good, good, uh, good thing to use. So yeah, we're letting this flash off. I guess I'll go ahead and mix the paint up real quick. I can do that. If I can find it. Andrew just brought it to me. Okay, where is it? Where is the paint? There it is. Drip foot. So this is a uh, MPB. It's a one to one. One to one. My uh, bench is a mess, man.
the paint. Clean up this mess a little bit here. So yeah, what's going on, man? Just hogging. Haven't heard nothing from him. No videos. What's going on? Got a little Thanksgiving, uh, happy Thanksgiving thing. But uh, like to see a video, man. So uh, that dude's bike's coming. You're painting. It's in the army over there. It's a sport bike. How you coming with that? I haven't heard comment from you or anything. So, hope everything's okay out there in Ohio, man. All right, I think we're flashed off pretty good. I'm gonna go with the Develvis, the GTI, as always. I noticed Matt was the only one that found any humor in my uh, compressor video. So. Just thought I'd put it out there, you know. Give you guys, man, HPR, he's got a nice setup there, man. Nice setup. Yeah, I, my, uh, My brain doesn't work that way, guys. I mean, uh, I can get it done, but I'm sort of scatterbrained. You know, I got the compressor, but I can't follow through with the install. So I don't know. Just hang a hose on it, put a filter on there, and it seems to work pretty good for me. But uh, one day I'd like to do all that, you know, piping and uh, put all my filters in. I've got all those filters, just haven't used them yet. give a little shout out to is uh, the Iceman. I've been watching his videos and uh, I really appreciate you uh, posting your videos up there man because I'm struggling with a lot of the same issues that you have and uh, after I stopped taking the, all these painkillers and stuff I was taking them for five years and uh, you know now I'm starting to recognize some of the symptoms that I have and uh, you sound a lot like I do, you know, the way your days go. And uh, it's very interesting watching your videos and, uh, you know, how you deal with stuff and your thought thought process. So, uh, cool videos. I love the Datsun 510s. Used to have one. That was my first car. And, uh, I love that car, man. I worked all summer at a place called the Z Shop in Orlando. And... Uh, we worked on the well, I didn't work on it. I swept floors, changed oil and stuff, and the owner, Frank, can't remember his last name, man. It's all he worked on was the 240s and the uh, Nissan, or the Datsuns back then. They weren't Nissans. But uh, he fixed that car up for me, and uh, I worked here all summer, and I finally got a tag for it and drove it home. And the first night I drove it home, I had a tree crash down on it, total little car out. It was a little two-door 510. And uh, I ended up buying the car back from the insurance company and driving it with no back window for probably a year or two. And uh, got that thing all finished up and I was hot rodding it. And uh, went off road on one of the highways here. And uh, when I came back up onto the highway, the car got airborne and landed in the back of somebody's pickup truck. And uh, I was actually going off the road to pass these guys. They were almost stopped on the road talking to each other and uh, when I went off the road the grass was a little wet and uh, the car got all sideways and was heading for a culvert and I cut the wheel at the last minute and it bit into the grass and uh, 
took me and my buddy for a ride back into the inner or onto the expressway there or the road and uh we hit that shoulder man and it was like a ramp and uh it was slow motion went into the bed of that pickup truck and uh the whole front of the car like came off in slow motion and uh yeah that was probably one of the better cars uh for me not to have anymore uh, i went from the nissan or the Datsun to a mustang 67 convertible uh, I got in a lot less trouble with that car than the, the Datsun was constantly always, you know, topping it out, running it hard. Love that car. All right, let's throw some paint on this and get a mask. This one's so long, man. The last video ended up being 40 minutes. I don't get a lot of people watching them when they're that long, so not that that matters, but yeah. I hate making a video and nobody's gonna watch it, so. All right, that's it, man. We're about covered in one coat. That's why I like that sealer. You just match it to the color that you're gonna be spraying and it's uh, almost instant coverage. So we'll put one more coat on that and hit it with some 30 clear and we'll go to the house. So, so I guess today we're gonna work on Andrea's Jeep when we get back to the house. Uh, she's got some peeling issues, we'll take care of that. And uh, get her going where she can sell that thing. And uh, maybe get some Christmas money. Yeah, man. It's always tight at Christmas time. You guys are in the car business. You know that. I'm not telling you guys anything. So, uh, nobody ever wants to get their car fixed at Christmas time. So, I'm going to straighten out that tape edge there so we don't have an issue when we clear it. Uh, yeah, we... Uh, That's how it is, man. Andrew is trying to get into the car sales thing. The paint store is really slow. Uh, almost no business. So it's off probably, you know, by half, maybe a little more than half. And uh, we got the some of our competitors playing a little dirty right now. Uh, you know, when we started this little venture, they gave us an area. And uh, we actually had to purchase the area that we wanted to sell paint in. And the rule of thumb is, is if you go into a shop and they have the product that you're selling, you uh, you don't try to sell it in there or solicit, you know, because there's already a dealer currently uh, in that shop, and uh, you would be taking business from a, you know, fellow jobber. Well, the way it comes to find out, the way it works is, is uh, it's only your area when the shop's under contract while they're paying their machine off. And after that's done, they can buy who, from whoever or wherever they want to. Uh, 
So we had a couple shops that just closed down, and then we had a couple shops that just bounced bad checks to us, and then we have another shop that uh, they're saving $15 on the particular product that we were selling them. So after six years, they decided to go with this other guy because he's saving them $15 on each uh, gallon that he's buying. Now, he's not a big gallon customer, you know, he doesn't buy a whole lot. So that's uh, the amount that you buy reflects the price that you pay, obviously. And uh, they're already discounting other products and uh, donating products for uh, magazine cars. And, uh, and you got to consider the support that you give. Uh, if you have a color match issue or there's an issue of any kind, you, uh, you know, drop what you're doing, run down there and help them out. And uh, it seems like they didn't value much. They didn't put much value in any of that customer service. You know, it seems like it's all about the price nowadays, which is a real shame. Uh, I remember when I used to work for Scooter, uh, I pretty much worked for the company store. I was always buying something from my car. And uh, Jeanberg used to be the place to go get your Volkswagen parts. You know, that was it. It was uh, small car specialties. Uh, CB Performance was very small. It was called Claude's Buggies. It wasn't even CB Performance yet. But, uh, you know, you paid the extra money when you bought from Gene, but the quality was great and you could always call and get somebody with knowledge on the phone. And uh, that was worth the extra that you paid. Well, one day I was complaining to Scooter that, you know, I, I couldn't believe that he was marking my stuff up. You know, it was a little markup, but it was a markup, and I worked for him. And uh, I guess it was a life lesson, and I look back on it now, and, you know, it rings true. But he told me that if he didn't mark the product up, that he wouldn't be able to service the product. And uh, I didn't really put much thought into that at the time. But, you know, when the guy marks something up a little bit, I mean, he has to because that's the cost of doing business. And... Uh, I don't know. I just uh, that's always stuck in my head. He's been there for 32 years, and uh, people often say that he charges too much. But uh, all the other Volkswagen shops in town have died and gone by the wayside. He's the last one. So uh, I don't know who the smart businessman was. You know, the guys were out of business, or the guy that charges a little extra so he could have some uh, staying power. Just a little thought on. Uh, you know, you guys out there, they're doing business with people and uh, don't let the dollar be the bottom line, you know? Put some thought into the service that you get from the person that you deal with. All right, let's throw another coat on this. Enough yakking. Anyway, the guy that uh, 
cut a particular product by $15 doesn't even mix paint. So uh, it'll be interesting when they have their first color match issue. How that gets handled now. Usually it's the uh, jobber that's taking care of the account that's responsible for the uh, color match calls. We don't get a whole lot of them. And uh, we do have technicians, actual field techs through Matrix that'll go out, you know, if there's an issue. But uh, I think they sort of expect you to have a little knowledge in color tinting. You know, and uh, this particular shop doesn't. Very behind in the time when it comes to color match. So, they seem to be the one shop in town that has the problem, so it'll be interesting to see what happens when that comes up. And, uh, normally, now you would try to uh, adjust the price and go back in there and crawl in there and uh, do what you could do to salvage the account, but I'm just at the point now where uh, I just get tired of people, you know, doing people wrong. So uh, instead of a 15% decrease, I just did a 30% increase. If he needs something, I just marked it up 30%. So when he does call, he'll be pleasantly surprised that the price increases. And uh, that's just it. The other thing that I could do, I guess, this is an idea that I had, but my wife didn't like it. Uh, since there's no real boundaries or areas, I was thinking what I would do is just uh, go buy a bunch of product and follow this guy around in his area and then hit, hit all his shops the day before he goes to them and sell them the stuff at cost, you know? Give them like a 40% discount. And uh, obviously, you know, I'd be moving the product. I wouldn't be making any profit, but I would still be uh, keeping my account active. And uh, if he wanted to go back in there, he would have to cut his price. This is something that I thought of. Mainly this is the one supplier in town that supplies this stuff, the warehouse that's doing all this underhanded stuff. It has nothing to do with actual Matrix. Matrix has a warehouser that they sell to and that's who we buy from. And, uh, he's done everything he can to put Andrea out of business in the last couple of years with uh, no success. But it is aggravating. You know, every time I turn around, she's getting stabbed in the back. And, uh, you know, you hate to see somebody you love get stabbed in the back. So that's why I hope the car venture thing works out. And, uh, she can move on to something new. But, you know, the uh, body shop business is cutthroat, man. Uh, the more they increase the price on stuff and the more regulation that comes into play, the tighter it's going to get. Man. All right, let's mix a little 30 up, 30 clear. today. Okay, let's 
to you know, always makes too much clear. accelerator in there maybe if I have some. I don't think I have any. Let's go with it. Go with what we got. Turn you back on at the house, and uh, we'll see you in a little while, man. <laughs> 